My name is Chris Hintz. I am a product manager here at Netscout. What I wanted to do real quickly here is give a, just a brief overview of the Netscout Tools product line because I think there can be some people who maybe don't really know what that encompasses. So I will, pardon me, I'm going to turn and look at the screen uh, because I need to read this word for word. On July 14th, 2015, the following products from Fluke Networks were merged with Netscout Systems. Visual TrueView, OptiView XG, OneTouch, Link Sprinter, Link Runner, Air Magnet, and AirCheck. Fluke Networks continue to retain the DTX Cable Analyzer, Versive Cabling Certification System, Linkware Live, and Telecom products. What that means is Netscout actually has some really nice wireless products. And if you look at what our real unique value is when it comes to these products, it's in the ability to tie together the whole workflow and particularly use our Link Live portal to improve that collaboration across the IT functions. So we have a full suite of products that allows networking professionals and particularly wireless professionals to get the job done and get a job, job done well. Now, today, what we're going to really be focusing on is the AirCheck G2. One question people might have is, why the AirCheck? Well, really, our premise around on-premises testing is the idea that you don't have to have an expert there every time to get good data. And so, when we look at the AirCheck, the way we always think about it is simple but powerful. There's a lot of what we'll talk about in the UI and the use of the tool that's very straightforward. You don't necessarily have to be a networking guru to use it. But the results you get and the information it makes available is really powerful to the user. So you don't really have to know everything, but if you do know everything, let's say you're, I don't know, maybe you're Keith, you can really deep dive in and actually solve some problems even with the information that's available despite that simplification. So some key features, some of these we'll actually go over today. Our auto test, People love this, you know, quick, measures a bunch of information right off the bat. Channel utilization, we all know that channels are pretty heavily utilized in the Wi-Fi space, sometimes by Wi-Fi, sometimes not by Wi-Fi, and that can have a real impact on your network. We have the ability to do a locate, and you can track down a device. Maybe it's a rogue AP, maybe it's a strange client you're not familiar with. Whatever it needs to do, you can actually locate that device pretty easily, and we have an Ethernet test. Kind of nice if you're installing APs, Maybe you want to you know, pull that cable out, make sure that, yep, okay, this is a valid cable, passes my Ethernet test, now I'm going to plug the AP in, AP comes up okay, now I can run my wireless tests, yep, everything looks to be good. So I can actually take my entire testing from wired all the way through to make sure the wireless is okay, all with one device. And one of the things that facilitates all that are profiles. So what I can actually store onto the device is a profile that contains all the necessary information and configuration that I want to use. And I talked about earlier, well, that's you know, simple but powerful. You don't need an expert there. This is one of the big facilitators of that. Because if you want to, say, have a unit that sits at a remote sales office, and your intent is that when something goes wrong, I will have the admin there go run a quick test or two for me, you can have already pushed a profile to that device that actually is configured the way you expect it to run, so they don't need to really know anything. It's already configured the way you expect those tests to run. Very powerful, and we'll touch on profiles a bit later. So let's talk about, a bit about auto test. So what does auto test really do? Well, you can see a sample result here. Very simple, runs at the push of the button. In fact, auto test is present right on the home screen of the product. So I don't have to go find it. I don't have to connect to something or do anything. Nope, right on the home screen, hit the auto test, and I'm off and running. And you can see what it's going to do is it's going to actually check my air quality, see how well I'm you know, doing in terms of the utilization, both for Wi-Fi as well as for non-Wi-Fi devices. It's also going to check some things that are common problems, particularly in the 2.4 band, go channel interference, adjacent channel interference. And I can actually set my thresholds individually for those, saved in, like we talked about the profile, in terms of what I consider a good or bad level for APs that might be interfering. And then I can leverage that to say, okay, so how's it looking right here? I can also additionally configure one of my networks, like say my guest network here that a bunch of you are attached to. I can actually configure that into my profile as well, and I can enable that on my auto test. So at that same button push, I'm gonna to try to attach to the network, see if I can get connected, see if I can get an IP address. I reach the gateway. So again, that single button push 
tells me a ton about the current state of that network. So if Joe is complaining in one portion of the building saying, hey, I can't get on the wireless, it's not working at all, pull out the air check, head over there, fire it up, and hit the auto test button. What comes up red? Something comes up red, that's a problem. Worth looking into further. Very simple, very straightforward, but very powerful in the information that you can get. Mention a little bit about this configuration. You can see it here. I can pick how many scans I really want to do. So maybe I want to do a scan through the band three or four times because I really want to make sure I collect everything. Or maybe I want my auto test to be quick. So I'm only going to take one scan. Fully within my, my ability to configure. Whether I do my network tests, I can turn that on and off. And then obviously, if I have it on, I pick which networks I care about testing against. So very configurable, very simple and straightforward. So this is the configuration screen. Very easy for me to check what I need to do. Talk a little bit about channel utilization. Some of you have probably seen the screen. I see at least one person who has his air check out right now. Yes. <laughs> the um, test isn't looking so hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in an engineering building like this, I will make no promises about adjacent channel, code channel. I'm sure we've stuff, got, got stuff on channels two, three, four, five. Lord only knows. The only thing green is, is the case. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can believe that. I can definitely believe it. It makes it very hard when I'm trying to do demos at, at my desk. It's like, look, guys, it's all going to fail. But trust me, that's because of our environment. It's nothing wrong with the device. Um, when looking at channel utilization, again, really simple. It sits on the home screen. Simple tap of the button. I'm already looking at this information. So ticks my simple box. Powerful. I have a ton of information all right here on the screen. Those black dots, that's a representation of how many APs I've got. So I can very quickly, like in this one, when I took this screen capture, I can say, boy, where I was standing, channel six looks pretty crowded. And I've got some knuckleheads on channels three and four and five. So look, quick glance, boom, I'm already seeing information. Things that would make me say, well, I, I probably need to take some steps here. If I was in a real deployment instead of an engineering office, I'd be pretty concerned with what I saw in the 2-4 band. I can even drill in further. I can get more information on any individual channel. So if I pick a channel and, and drill in, I can see that stack up of APs, the full number there. So I can get that in understanding. I can even drill in further, view details, and I can start to actually see the channel utilization over time. It's going to scroll across the screen for me. With blue being 802.11 information, and the gray being non 11 So maybe the network's OK in terms of its capacity. I don't see a lot of 802.11 traffic, but it got a lot of interference. Not that, I mean, that never happens, right? And there's never really an interference with Wi-Fi. I know that's so rare. But, <laughs> it, you know, that could be your problem. So again, being able to drill in on that channel and say, well, you know, I was actually pretty lucky when I took this screen capture. I only had about 1% non 11 but it, Heck, I would imagine even in this room, we've got some AV equipment going. There's plenty of stuff piled up right now. Wouldn't be surprised if we're significantly above one percentage. So how, how do you calculate the non-802.11? Thank you, Keith, because I was just going to ask that. You, were, you look ready, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we calculate that by actually looking at the amount of signal that is obviously not decodable as 802.11 signal that is above a threshold. And based upon that and the amount of time we see it as active, we qualify that as a true non 11 transmitter in the environment, and we measure its amount of time. Is What's that measured with the spectrum analyzer? It is not a true spectrum analyzer um, in that there's not something like, you may be familiar with the Spectrum XT product as an example. So we do not have something like a Spectrum XT card embedded in the device, no. We are leveraging the information that is available from the Wi-Fi radio that is in the air check. Uh, but we are quantifying a, basically a, a base noise that's un, not Wi-Fi modulated. And if that is above a threshold, we declare that to be a non-802.11 source in the environment. So non-802.11 is, are, are you looking specifically at the, like the preamble of the packet and saying this is, this is an incoming 802.11? packet or frame and saying this is airtime associated with that? 
Yeah, so once I've drilled on a channel, I'm now focused on that channel, I'm decoding packets as I go. So I actually am pulling those things in. So it's very easy for me to therefore know, you know, where am I, how much I have in the way of packets and sort of how much time they're taking. And then my other noise floor and how constant it is, how much it's either randomized or seems to be an intentional transmitter of some sort because it's constantly there but not modulated as I expect for, for Wi-Fi is how I'm going to then narrow that down and call that a non aotr 11 uh, Wi-Fi, or sorry, non-Wi-Fi source. Um, one of the things that that does mean uh, is that anything that I don't recognize as being Wi-Fi will get categorized as that. So I don't, I don't attempt to try and segregate that into smaller buckets. As far as I'm concerned, there's either something that I obviously can demodulate, and this is, this is Wi-Fi signaling, and I understand that, and so I'm going to declare that, that, and there's sort of everything else. I guess my question was more like, I hear a preamble. Mm -hmm. I can identify that the preamble is Wi-Fi, but I might not necessarily be able to decode the packet. Mm -hmm. Do we count that as Wi-Fi or non-Wi-Fi? Right. Yeah, if I, if I know there's a packet incoming, I'm going to recognize that that's a packet because I, I can update my nav, I understand what's going on. That, that we kind of get for free thanks to the standard because the standard allows me to know that there is a packet there and, and, and its duration. Even if I can't figure out what's in the payload, I get enough information to kind of know what's it, how long that's going to be on. I get the duration information. That's a nice freebie that the standard gives us. What's the threshold for measuring it into the non-802.11 and considering it as impactful? So most of our thresholds are configurable. So for, for the non-noise threshold, uh, if I remember correctly, it defaults to neg 90, but I would have to double check that exact number for you. It does create some confusion when, you were, when you're using, for example, channel utilization, and those numbers don't line up with infrastructure vendors terms of channel utilization. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it can create some conflict when we're looking at a remote network and mm -hmm. we look at an AP that says, hey, your CU is 72% and you roll on site with a, with a air check and it's 3%. <laughs> uh, you know, when there's such a dramatic shift in, in CU and I, and I realize it's a byproduct of, you know, the 811 radio. Can you speak to any plans on, on, on shoring that accuracy or, or at least that discrepancy up some or... Sure. Um, from, from our perspective, what we are able to measure is what the air check is experiencing. And of course, that does mean that we can't tell you necessarily what the AP is experiencing. Uh, a wide discrepancy can come from a number of sources, uh, not the least of which could simply be uh, neighboring traffic that maybe the AP can't see from where that person is currently standing with the air check. Um, we are looking at some enhanced ways that we can kind of get out of band information to help us improve our numbers. Um, but right now, we're mainly focused on what the radio does tell us. 